with this coronavirus. Tell me what you think about what Doug Ford, the way he has handled this. How do you feel about it? What would you like to have seen the Ontario government do, or is there a country you would have liked to have seen it patterned after? Did any jurisdiction in the world get this right, and what did they do?
What do you think the government should have done? Should they have done, let's say uh, we're in April and the facts are becoming clear, should they have just, I mean, what, what should they have done at, or not done at that point? Well, there was a number of things that they could have done and that were offered to be done that they didn't do. So, but there were some things, you know, one of the things that I suggested to them is that those, because our long-term care facilities were overloaded with people being shipped out of sick people being sent uh, to long-term care from our hospitals because of the anticipated surge, one of the things that I suggested was that we allow that. Well, they did that here in Saskatchewan, too. And I think somebody must have locked in a contract before, you know, when the fear-mongering was high, because we were hardly having any cases, and then all of a sudden these field hospitals opened. It was really, really ridiculous. They also closed down 12 emergency wards in rural hospitals, and people said, look, it's seeding time. We could uh, have some farm injuries. If we went back to April 
and the emergency lockdowns were over, you would have rolled it out with no social distancing, no masks, no lockdowns, like all businesses open, all travel open. Yes, and there, there wasn't that many people that got infected and very few died. That's right, but here was a controlled group, okay? Um, and that was the, the eye-opener for me. In April, when I started looking at what happened on the Diamond Princess, and, uh, and, and like I said, it was, it was very simple here. Here we had um, a, a demographic group. The passengers were generally uh, elderly, um, and the crew generally younger, right? And uh, let me just bring it up uh, what the numbers uh, on Wikipedia say. Um, So there was near 4,000 people on that ship. And, um, and um, 712 people were got infected. But, the, but that's fine, that's fine. But what I'm... Uh, but, but there, it, it's, it's spelled it out in clear... Uh, and what did they do? They, um, they locked people in their cabins in poor ventilation. <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, uh, and, and it was a high proportion. Just about, like, none of the crew, uh, none of the younger people that, of the crew Right, right. So, so what I'm what I'm asking is, do, would you have just opened it right up at the end of April? Do you think that's what should have been done? I think, as I said in, in May, the first opportunity I had, I, uh, I I informed the legislature that first off we should end the state of emergency, that there was no longer an emergency that required the. Uh, disruption and the end of our democracy. That was number one. Uh, and, and why I said it in that fashion is because I think if we would have been allowed to actually discuss and debate this, Lee, back in, in May, uh, I'm not sure what the actual outcome would have been, but I think it would have been very, very much different. Uh, and, you know, the Drew, uh, you know, we didn't require masks in Ontario until July, long after the uh, cases and the hospitalizations um, were essentially over at that point. Um, so I think, you know, social distancing, keeping, uh, keeping a level of distance from one another when there's a, uh, a virus present is, is a good idea. Of course, proper hygiene and hand washing is never a bad idea. Um, and it becomes more relevant and more important when there is a virus transmitting. Um, but, you know, there really would not have been um, much need, um, you know, uh, mm -hmm. should we have had uh, 20,000 people in a, in a ball stadium? I'm not sure if that would have been a good idea or not. Um, right, understood, I, yeah. I don't
right now you would have said earlier that there were misconceptions that were believed tell us what the misconceptions are in the common belief about corona everything was misconceptions you know remember we were told that there could be asymptomatic spread well we know that that's not true now uh we were told that yeah you could become infected by touching surfaces well we know that that's not true anymore um you know there's um uh, we were told that the infection fatality rate was going to be uh worse than the spanish flu um uh, uh, and now the who has released the infection fatality rate last friday and it's pretty much the same as the seasonal flu um so just about everything we feared of the virus in march just about everything not not quite everything but just about everything we feared has turned out to be false right so oh, it sounds like So now, when we see these, uh, just a sec, when, when we see these case rises then, and the numbers of cases, is that just a reflection of more testing, or is, do you think that, it, that it's really kind of meaningless that there's more cases?
I want to know, do you think that more people are getting on your side and your perspective of this? Great. Uh, now, the chief medical officer, or I'm not sure if I have her exact title correct, but she is the one in Toronto who is uh, making, you know, recommendations. She'd like to see another lockdown of the restaurants there. And Doug Ford is saying, no, I am not going to destroy people's lives. So do you think that he deserves some credit for not giving in to the worst? I guess no, the, because yeah. I'll say this. They haven't acted on evidence at any time since March. They acted on false projections. They acted on exaggerated models. They act, acted on uh, fearful um, um, and, and, and fear from public Right. Now, have you seen doctors and maybe even other MPPs, have they quietly said to you, keep what you're doing or, or maybe confided in you their fears to speak up or to oppose uh, others on this? No. But that is a powerful statement as well that calls on all Western governments to shift focus uh, and allow healthy people to live and focus their attentions on those who are at risk. 
Are there more people dying of the measures against COVID than COVID itself? Mm-hmm. Well, we're not even seeing, there's no way for us to measure yet how many people have died because they couldn't get an organ transplant. But I know between March and June, we did 200 fewer organ transplants in Ontario alone. We know between March and June, we did 1,100 fewer cardiac surgeries. Uh, so, you know, these things are not cosmetic. These things are not elective. If you need heart surgery, it's because you need the heart surgery. We don't do that just for uh, shits and giggles. Yeah. Yeah. And In the past, we've seen people's approval ratings go up when they've taken some really heavy-handed measures against COVID. Do you think those days are over? Do you think that, that the shine is worn off and people are waking up? Wow. Well, thank you for your courage and your insights on this. It was fantastic. And um, I don't have anything else to ask unless you have anything you want to add. <laughs>